Hi, I'm John F. Allen. And I'm R.J. Sullivan. And we're the Two Towers. Greetings and welcome to the Two Towers Talk Show. I'm your host, John F. Allen, Tower One. And I'm Tower Two, R.J. Sullivan. Today, we're going to be discussing and reviewing Shazam, the 2019 film in the DCEU that was released in the United States by Warner Brothers Pictures on April 5th of 2019. The film grossed $366 million worldwide, making it a box office success. And the film received mostly positive reviews from critics, uh, praise for director David F. Sandberg in his direction and the performances of star Zachary Levi and uh, Angel, Asher Angel as Billy Batson and Jack Dylan Grazer as Freddie Freeman. Um, yes. One of the things about this film is that it took a more lighthearted uh fun approach than a lot of the other DCEU films, which is probably one of the reasons why it got such great and positive reviews. Uh, just so you would know, Shazam is a character that was created by C.C. C. Beck um, back in, I believe, 1941 and was originally published through Fawcett, comics uh, later on uh, we'll talk about this a little later on later on it became a dc property uh this particular iteration of the character goes by the name shazam originally the character was called captain marvel and we'll get into that in just a little bit but i wanted to talk about real briefly the main actors and the main characters in the film you have, of course, Shazam, the title character, played by Zachary Levi. Uh, you might know him uh, from uh, the uh, Chuck um, show, and you also might know him as Fandral in Thor, Dark World. He was one of the Warriors Three, the blonde one with the sword. A lot of people probably didn't recognize him. Uh, I, I did not recognize him from that. Right. Uh, the original Fandral, uh, I forget the actor's name, who portrayed him in the first Thor movie, had to bow out for some reason, and so Zachary Levi took up the mantle in the second film. We have Angel Asher as Billy Batson, the alter ego of Shazam. We have Mark Strong as Dr. Savannah, Shazam's arch nem 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 nemesis. I can't speak right now. <laughs> and um, we have Jack Dylan Grazer as Freddie Freeman, uh, who was also known in the comics as Captain Marvel Jr., but not anymore. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, Dejman Honshu, who plays the wizard who grants Shazam his powers. And we have um, Megan Good as the adult version of Darla. We have Grace Fulton as Mary. And then we have Michelle Borth as grown-up superhero Mary Marvel. <laughs> uh, also, again, she no longer goes by that name. We also have Ian Chin as Eugene Choi. Uh, we have Ross Butler as the adult Eugene. We have Jovan Armand as Pedro. And then we have DJ Cotrana as the adult Pedro. Now, let me say, I'm keeping this character and this actress for last because I thought that she was really the heart of the film where it came uh, as far as the little kids were concerned. And that's Faith Herman. She plays the little girl version of Darla. And she is as cute as a button. I, she just, every time she was on the screen, I just, my heart melted. I mean, I'm not a real gushy person, but she just like stole the show. She stole my heart in this, in this film. And she's just the cutest little girl. So um, she, every, every scene she was in, it just brightened. 
she she's uh probably going to be really a uh, good little actress and, and as she grows up uh, she'll she'll be a fine actress later on um so my yeah, initial the, uh, the the group go ahead i, I was going to say most of the you have like you have um you have billy and you have freddy and then you have the rest of the orphans in the home but uh but darla was the one that kind of stood out amongst that group i thought and i definitely mm-hmm. agree with you if not for her i honestly can't remember much of much that the other ones did mary a little bit maybe but she was the one that uh had enough of a distinct personality that you could remember remember her specifically afterwards right and i i i'd seen uh faith herman the actress who plays the uh child version of darla in before in a car commercial and she was the <laughs> cutest thing then and i was like oh that little girl is so cute she was with her family and she got tired and she was sleeping in the car and you know then when i saw her in this film i was like oh that's the little girl from the car commercial i was like that's kind of cool you know um one of the things one of the other actors in this film who is of note is john glover and he plays uh, mr savannah who is the father of dr savannah who is played by again by mark strong uh you may recognize john glover he uh, he was the voice for the riddler in batman the animated series and then later on he was lionel luthor on the Smallville series. And he also was Dr. Jason Woodrow in the Joe Schulmacher Batman and Robin from 1997. Yeah. I have a couple comments about him. The entire, mm-hmm. the entire movie, he, it was really tapping the back of my head. He looks so familiar. Um, and I don't remember Smallville beyond some generalities. I certainly don't remember how prominent Lionel Luther was in that was he did he have a pretty big part in Smallville and did he look similar to how he looks here in Shazam yes and kind of yes so yes he had a very prominent role in Smallville they featured Lionel Luthor quite extensively as a foil for uh, Lex Luthor right who was played right. by Michael Rosenbaum Right, right, and, right. And yeah. um, it was it his his dynamic with Lex, the character of Lionel Luthor, and his dynamic with Lex was one of the reasons why Lex ended up being the Lex Luthor that we know because of that father son dynamic. Was so it he, similar yeah. to what they did here? Uh, yes. As a matter of fact, it was very similar. The only difference is is, is that. Lex Luthor was more sure of himself than Savannah was as a child. Sure. And of course he didn't need power. He, his power was his, uh, his IQ basically. (laughs) And, and and don't get me wrong. Lionel Luthor was a genius himself, but Lex was something that was much more brilliant. And he, and he was very calculating. He called up on his own resources, unlike, savannah in this film who basically kind of was looking for something to make himself stand out uh but there are definitely some very strong parallels between the father dynamic that he plays with savannah dr savannah in this film as the father uh, i'll and bet how that's he played lionel luther I'll bet that's what was nagging at the back of me the whole time because I was like, man, he seems so familiar. And it, and it couldn't have been it couldn't have been the Riddler. And I doubt it was Batman and Robin. But I, I was just sitting there the whole time going, this this vibe is so familiar to me. I'm sure it was from Smallville. Right. And one other small characteristic, it was a little bit different in Smallville in here. He pretty much looked the same, but in Smallville, he had like this BG's blowout hairstyle. So that kind of, <laughs> and I Fair don't enough. know what that, right. I don't know what that was all about. I mean, the show was in the nineties, so I don't, I don't get it, but it, it was what it was, you know, um, he went around looking like uh, Fred the lion from super chicken about the head. So I, I, I digress. Uh, <laughs> my overall 
feeling about this film is that I really enjoyed it. When I saw it at the, the in the theater, I was I took particular note of the performances, and I'd have to say, besides Darla, the performance for Freddie, as portrayed by Jack Dylan Glazer, Grazer, is one of the top performances, uh, right up there with. Mark Strong as Dr. Savannah and Zachary Levi and Asher Angel as Shazam and Billy Batson, uh, respectively. They, their interactions, the chemistry that these actors had made what is a fantasy tale that much more believable because you actually believe that they had these, these relationships. They really did a good job. And I had not heard of Asher Angel prior to this. Apparently he's also a singer. Uh, I had, I think that he and Zachary Levi were almost like the same person. I don't see how they were, it was so flawless how their personalities went from when he was Billy Batson and how he acted the tone and cadence of his voice. And then when he said Shazam and turned into the title character of Shazam, how Zachary Levi picked up on all of that. And it was almost like there was no change. I mean, even though the, his voice was deeper, it sounded like you were hearing Asher Angel's Billy Batson and vice versa. It, they really did a good job with making these characters uh, appear as one and these actors bringing that to life. I, uh, Jack Dylan Grazer as Freddie Freeman, he, his character stood out. I mean, he was the little kid that you just, I mean, I wish I had a brother like him. We would be getting into all kinds of juvenile delinquencies. It was just, he was a fun character. Um, his whole personality was kind of cool. I, I, I really enjoyed that. Um, and then Mark Strong, he has, a knack for playing villains uh if just as a side note for our viewers if you didn't recognize him he played sinestro in the green lantern film now i'm not recommending <laughs> green lantern film in any way shape or form because the movie sucked in my opinion however his performance in the film was not something that sucked it he was if you were going to think of anyone to play sinestro he was the guy I mean, it was a wasted casting and performance in a movie that just bombed. Um, that all being said, he also played the protagonist in the Robert Downey Jr. Sherlock Holmes films. So he has a knack for playing those uh, mischievous, dastardly villains that we've seen on the uh, silver screen. So Is, he, did he play ahead. Moriarty? Is that what you're saying? I, you know, that's a good question. I think it was Mariotti. I'm not certain. Um, okay. it, so I'm, I'm going to go on record. I bailed out of Green Lantern an hour in. <laughs> 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 I recorded it off the television and I just, I just couldn't. It, I just, I just couldn't. It was, wow. Yeah. Um, Mark Strong. Um, he played Lord was, Blackwood in the Sherlock Holmes. Uh, oh, okay. Film. Okay. Yeah. It wasn't Moriarty. I just, um, I, 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 I going to bug me. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I would say, uh, my overview of this cast is, uh, you know, Dr. Dr. Savannah is, um, they picked the one villain from all of Shazam's back story or, or mythology that I was actually familiar with. I have maybe, I'm going to guess three, Captain Marvel slash Shazam comics, one of which is a coloring book I had as a kid. And they all had Dr. Savannah in them for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. um, he seems to be the one I, I, I most associate with the character. Um, none of these actors, I, I, in my opinion, none of them have had like a real breakout role where they've really stood out to shine and i think this is the movie where a lot of that happened now i am not i don't watch the walking dead so i have to put a, an asterisk there with uh cooper andrews as victor Vas 
Vasquez, the uh, the soul, the um, foster parent father. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but he he definitely had some serious star power whenever he was on the screen. I could definitely feel it. I I could tell that um, he he was one of the veteran actors here, and uh, he brought a lot of heart along with uh, Marta Milans, who played his wife and and the two of them as the the foster parents really brought a lot of heart to this movie um coming back to dr savannah though i was really feeling the kevin spacey vibe from him um and of course i know there's he's kind of like uh, someone nobody talks about anymore i mean his career is completely trashed and he's his reputation is, is it is what it is, but I mean, that's, that's just the vibe I was getting. It felt very um, Kevin Spacey as, as Lex Luthor from Superman Returns to me, which isn't, is not a bad thing because if you want, if you right. want to channel a, a villainous vibe, um, that's not a bad, it's not a bad vibe to go with. Uh, but I was definitely picking up on that. I um, But I was very impressed with him. Uh, Obviously, the two character, the two uh, actors that played Billy and Freddie were were terrific together. You've already talked about that. Um, let me see here. Uh, you've you've mentioned the chemistry between Billy and his alter ego uh, Shazam. There was that, you know, I and the 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 key to this franchise is. What if a little kid could become Superman? I mean, to me, that is that is the absolute that is comic good comic book gold right there, you know? Right. Right. Um getting into the history a little bit, there was a time in the forties when Fawcett Comics Captain Marvel was outselling Superman. And I totally get why, because that's the one piece that that wasn't directly translated in Superman. The idea that when when Billy Batson became Captain Marvel, I'm going to call him Captain Marvel. That's who he is to me. But <laughs> when he became, he he was he was Superman, but he still had the little kid brain, and that's just it's so brilliant. And it's one of those things where it's like I absolutely get as a kid. I would probably be the be the one buying the the Captain Marvel comics over the Superman comics way back when, and I could see why DC considered it a threat. And we'll get into that history a bit more, but that was kind of the, I think that was the spark that started the rivalry that led to DC obtaining the character eventually. But that's what this movie needed to capture, and they absolutely captured it. Um, Add to that the overall message of, you know, the family that you're born into and the family you choose. The lesson that Billy had to learn from that as a victim of of being in the foster care system, uh, a mother who basically didn't want him, who'd been thrown around from, from uh, home to home. And then uh, the bond he, he has with, with the other foster child, Freddie. And I just, everything worked exactly right. And if you didn't get all those elements together just right, this movie would have fallen apart and it, it would not have worked. Um, obviously, this was also a very good follow-up to Aquaman for DC, which was also a movie more on the, the light side. Um, so this this kind of continued DC, the DC universe's um, leaving behind the darker elements and going into a more lighter adventure comedy tone, which is absolutely where this movie lives. Um, so yeah, um, I'll leave it at that for now, John, where do we, where do we take this next? Well, I wanted to basically correct myself with regards to the character. And I think we'll go into, uh, the history of the character and its comic book roots and talk about other iterations, be they live action and or cartoon animated uh, iterations. But the character was created in 1939 by C.C. Beck and writer Bill Parker. The first time Captain Marvel, a.k.a. Shazam, 
appeared was in Wiz Comics number two, which had a cover date of February 1940 and was published by Fawcett Comics. So I just wanted to give our readers a little tidbit of information sure. where that was concerned and then to let them know also that by the time that you got Captain Marvel as a character uh, over to DC, it was 1972 when he was initially cast uh, or, or he was initially brought into the fold, as it were, with regards to being a DC character. And then you have the live action uh, version of Shazam. It was a TV show. And kids, this was quite a while ago, okay? So this was like 1974 to 1976. RJ and I were kids. And, you know, some of you may not have even been born or close to being Saturday, born. Saturday morning fun at its greatest right there. <laughs> right, exactly. And it also had another sister show called Isis, and they had the Shazam Isis Hour. Oh, yeah. Uh, it was a bunch of live action fun by Filmation that uh, RJ and I uh, watched as children. That being said, the TV show was it's nostalgic it's a great it's great nostalgia it didn't age very well so if you were to watch it today and not had had any nostalgia for it you'd probably be thinking this is some shit that i probably <laughs> just would be you, you'd be rolling your eyes let's put it that way so, epic adventure on a low budget <laughs> right right and and it was like yeah but this isn't the first live action version of the character of captain marvel uh, there was actually a version uh, in black and white in the um, 40s. It was a serial through yeah, Republic right. Picture. It's called The Adventures of Captain Marvel. And the Captain Marvel character was played by Tom Tyler, who was known as a Western actor. He was uh, in a lot of Westerns back in the day. And then he was also in The Mummy's Hand, which is in... Uh, is a genre of horror that uh, RJ's near and dear to. I am yeah, too. Yeah, he's a, he's the bigger of the horror fans. And then uh, Frank Coughlin, who played Billy Batson in the serial. Now um, he, as Billy Batson, was not a little kid in that serial. He was actually someone who was a young adult, passing as someone in their late teens. So uh, and we're going to get into that serial and how it leads into the TV series with regards to the age of Billy Batson. So the next was the 70s television show. And that had, um, that had a, an actor playing the title role of Shazam, a.k.a. Captain Marvel. Um, that that actor's name was Michael Gray. And Michael Gray was a grown man when this series was on. I mean, albeit he was in his early 20s at the time. Um, Billy Bat, what, what made this character, as RJ had talked about before, what made this character so great is that it was what a kid would do if he had all the powers of Superman or a, a superhero that was of that level of power, but still had you know, the kid personality. Well, in those, in the serial from the forties and the television show from the seventies, they entirely skipped that element. Yep. Exactly. These were grown people that were not children and they just turned into bigger adults with muscles. And it was, <laughs> and yep. it was like, okay, so I didn't have, you didn't have that kinship as a kid except for in the comics when Billy was a teenager right. and you saw that and you were able as, as we, when we were kids to be like, to be able to relate to that almost like on a level of Spider-Man or another teenage hero. Uh, so that was something that was missing from those live action iterations that we get in this film. Now, right. one of the other things that occurred or 
was of the time in the 70s was the animated Shazam. So yes, Shazam had an animated series. It was from 1981 to 1982. And it was the kids superpower hour with Shazam. And it had Captain Marvel and the Marvel family, Mary Marvel, Captain Marvel Jr., Uncle Dudley, and Talkie Tawny the Tiger. It also featured uh, nemesis such as Dr. Savannah, Mr. Mind, Black Adam, Mr. Adam, and Ibak. Uh, now, these are deep cuts from the comics. This was like a very Archie Comics type thing, you know, like tone to the show. Hmm. It was a uh, very kid friendly, you know, and the the aesthetics of the show were very cartoonish campish so the character as it was portrayed um in this cartoon was a little bit more goofy than the super friends if you <laughs> if you could kind yeah, of imagine. yeah 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 i'm and, not and yeah something. go ahead no i was just gonna say that's something to be said go ahead yeah. So I've seen clips of the serial from the 40s. I, I had forgotten that until you mentioned it. Um, just around. I've never watched the full serial, but I am aware of its existence. I'm very familiar with the live action 70s series. And what, what strikes me about it looking back, besides everything you've mentioned, <clears throat> it has this tone that <clears throat> Billy, ba Billy Batson, who's a, a young adult, as you say, um, he, he gets to a point where he, he needs to, to change to Captain Marvel. And then when he does, and they, they do the same animation every week, the kind of, it, it, it got embedded into your brain if you were a kid, because you'd watch it every week and there were certain clips that they would do over and over again. But I always got the impression, like, as soon as he changed into Captain Marvel, it didn't even feel like Billy Batson. I mean, it was like a completely different dude. There was no exactly. connection. Huh? Exactly. I agree with you exactly. It was there was no connection. It was like an entirely different person, not only in looks, but in personality and Exactly. Everything. Yeah. There was no continuation of personality from Billy Batson to Captain Marvel and back again. Um, which looking back on I think was a a, a major mystery that they could have they could have done. Um, even as a young adult. I never, um, even at, even with Billy Batson as a young adult, they could have given some hint that that uh, this is the same same person, simply in a, with a different physical appearance. But it always felt like he became literally somebody else for a few minutes, and then changed back to Billy Batson after they took care of whatever problem it was. Um, it always felt like a bit of a disconnect, even as a little kid. I don't think I could have put my finger on it at the time, but I think that that had a lot to do with why the show always, I always felt a little bit distanced from it. It's like, Oh, this is kind of like George Reeves Superman. Um, but it's newer, you know, <laughs> right. and honestly, the production values probably weren't as good, even though there was a, like a 30 year difference between them. Um, and then as far as the, uh, the animated show in the eighties, I'm honestly not familiar with that. So I'll let you speak. Uh, speak to that unless you, unless you've said everything there is to say regarding well, that. Well, there isn't really much else to say about the cartoon. It was an NBC Saturday morning cartoon. It was through Filmation Studios, the same people that bought the uh, '70s live action show. It right. was bigger deep dive into the comics with the villains that I mentioned. One thing mm -hmm. to note: the Shazam family that you see in the film that we are reviewing did not exist in its entirety back then. So the characters of uh, Pedro, Eugene, and Darla are very, very new in the mm. Shazam mythos. Those characters did not exist when this character was created, nor did Billy, uh, nor, I'm sorry, nor did Mary or Freddie originally. They weren't added until, you know, later, on after the character had been established because they wanted to create a family type mm -hmm. of uh, element to the character. And then you had uh, 
Uncle Dudley, who also known as Uncle Marvel, who was created a while back too. So when you're looking at the television uh, cartoon, then that's where you had your Mary Marvel, your Captain Marvel Jr., your Uncle Marvel, Talkie Tawny, and of course, Captain Marvel. Uh, this film introduces for the first time in live action or animation or any other iteration for that matter of the characters of Darla, Pedro, and Eugene. So mm -hmm. that that's something to be noted. This concludes part one of a two-part series in the Two Towers talk show review and discussion of Shazam! The movie. Join us next week on Monday for part two. Until then, stay nerdy. The Two Towers Talk Show is sponsored in part by OG Nerds, a new social media community dedicated to nerds of a certain age, 40 and over, although all are welcome. Members are encouraged to share articles and links on their favorite nerdy topics such as animation, anime, art, books, writing, comics, manga, movies, music, sports, tech, science, TV, video games, RPGs, and more. Be sure to visit them on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. The Two Towers Talk Show is sponsored in part by Showtime Cinema in Mooresville, Indiana. Their friendly staff is always willing to go the extra mile to make your movie-going experience an enjoyable and memorable one. Enjoy the comfort of their new cushioned seating in their spacious auditoriums, and while you're there, be sure to stop by the concession stand and purchase some popcorn where real butter topping is an option. They're located at 300 South Bridge Street in Mooresville, Indiana. We hope to see you at the movies.